Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to Two Toe Tags Metal Reviews and today we're giving you guys a review of Bleed the Future by Arch Spire. So we've listened to this album non-stop for the past week and I have to say it is quite enjoyable overall. Now, you don't really see too many tech death bands kind of really get out there into, I don't want to say the mainstream, but I guess more well-known popularity. At least ones of this caliber. These guys are blazing fast, like kind of wall of sound kind of-esque. Mm -hmm. So it's the kind of album that you don't see super often, like all things considered. You know, you kind of have to really go searching a little bit to find something like this. And the only issues I was really finding um, was that, first of all, it was a bit on the short side, and I don't really make that kind of comment on albums very often. It was like 31 minutes, mm -hmm. which is really, really short, especially considering that the songs on this album aren't really that short. They're like around three and a half at the shortest to like four and a half or so. Yeah. <clears throat> so it's, you know, it's not like the songs are overly short. I just felt maybe they could have added a song or two. I just That's just kind of a weird thing I noticed that I don't think I've really felt that way before about an album. Well, one thing to mention about that is it might be a short album, but you get a lot of content in there. There is a lot like, going on. That's right. Thing. There's a lot going on, and if you compare, like, if you just compare notes, for example, like, the amount of notes you get on this album is probably double what you get on an average album that's 30 minutes long anyway, so... You gotta weigh that out too, like, the band can only do so much. It'd be nice to have a longer album, but at the end of the day, was there enough content here to really warrant more stuff? Because of how I felt, like at the beginning of the week, I was like, oh my god, this is sick. Like, this is brutal, it's so technical, it's just got a lot going for it. But it fell kind of in this pocket for me halfway through the week, and I kept going, all these songs are the same vibe, the exact same vibe. Do I want another two or three songs like this? Not really, right? They need to do something to switch it up. They really do. And there's a couple small things. There's a little acoustic part. There's um, some, I don't know, the vocals are one thing. Let's talk about the vocals a little bit because they're pretty stagnant, if I can use that word. It's you've got one vocal, you got one kind of Style, style, very limited range, minus a few exceptions, a few screams in songs like Reverie on the Onyx has some screams in it. Um, his there were some big squeals in there. Was there, there? I think I heard one at some point. It might have been in uh, Drone Corpse Aviator. Maybe sure. I do recall squeal. there being a squeal. Thinking, oh, that's a good squeal. Either way, it's just it's not even the fact that he uses like basically one voice throughout the album. It's that his vocal phrasings, the patterns, the the uh, tonality, it's all very similar throughout. And that's a really good way to make an album feel stale very fast. I wish there was a little bit more vocal variety. And it's a shame that I'm knocking the vocals right now because this guy's a sick vocalist. Yeah. He is super talented, so fast. I don't know anybody else that sings like this. No one else really sounds like Ollie. He's just kind of just his own thing. No yeah. one is that fast with a growl like that. Like, yeah. no one does that. I don't know anybody <laughs> else that does it like that. Yeah, exactly. And he does it great, too. He does, which is why I'm, it feels shameful saying the vocals are one of the weak points because he's not a weak vocalist. So it's there's kind of a weird disconnect there where he's a strong vocalist, but the performance itself just doesn't hold strong for a whole week of listening. Another thing with the album's length is that, you know, because of the way that we do things where we listen to the album over and over, an album like this one, you're gonna get a lot more listens just for yeah. how short it is. So that kind of makes it a little bit more challenging for the album itself to really grow because it's, you're gonna hear it so many times, will it get stale or not? Exactly. And I found with this album, it kind of was, but it kind of wasn't. There are a few things about it that I kind of felt started to get a little bit samey or a little bit too similar to itself. Mm -hmm. For example, there are three out of eight songs that start with this fade-in guitar riff, which to a degree can be hard to tell apart. Yep, I agree. Um, both AUM and Astrid Cannon have this like mini guitar solo in the background of the verses, which is a cool thing, and I like it on both songs. But the fact that they use that idea twice, twice, yep. might you know think like, okay, is it really necessary? You did it already. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, you, you can also look at AUM and uh, Drone Corps Aviator. They also have kind of similar bridges with just the guitar happening. However, with AUM, there's a cool bass solo that happens that I like, which does yeah. make it a little bit um, more interesting. But songs like Abandon the Linear and Drain of Incarnation, every time they came out, I'm like, okay, this is cool, this is fine, but like, what's happening here that I haven't heard already? There are other yeah. songs in this album that have notable things that are interesting, but those two songs are probably my lowest rated throughout the week just because I can't really say anything about them. <laughs> they're just, Which they're there. Which one Abandon the Linear? Which one? Um, Drain of Incarnation. All right, okay, right. So yeah. they're kind I, would of like in, I would agree on They're kind of like in the middle of the album. Yeah. Now, what else is in the middle of the album that actually grew on me a lot is the title track. Okay. I like that song quite a bit. And at first, I felt the same way towards that song as I did the other two that I just mentioned, but I, it started to grow on me so much. And it was kind of early on. Like, I wrote a note, you know, as of midday Tuesday, saying it's been growing on me a lot. At first, I was kind of asked a bit, started like it more. It has this thing, this um, switch between an odd and even meter in kind of the main riff, and I like that a lot. And it's great, because it really, it's got a bounce to it. And I love that. And that's one thing that's really cool about some of the aspects of this album, is that you can really groove with it very in a very simple sense, but it's still highly technical. And that's yeah. one thing that's awesome about super technical music, is when they can still get you kind of dancing easily to it, or bobbing your head, yeah. what have you, and still has a lot of complexity. And that's really hard to capture sometimes. Well, to add to that too, this album, is, this band in general is very rhythmic. There's lot, not a lot of melody going on. Like even the vocals are very rhythmic. Um, the guitars, both guitars, two eight-string guitars, both very rhythmic. Um, the melody is there, but you gotta look for it. You have to really pay attention to it. And for you to have, be able to have songs that have that kind of bounce and have that kind of groove type of feel, I would not call this groove music by any means, but there are grooves there. Um, and to have that without a much melody is a testament to something. Mm -hmm. And considering melody, I mean, there are guitar solos in a lot of these songs, and honestly, every single time a solo came on, it was good. I enjoyed every solo that I heard. Decent enough. Every time there was a solo, I'm like, oh yeah, that was a good solo, after yeah. it was done. Yeah. Um, two songs that I really, really liked, Astrid Cannon has awesome guitar parts throughout the whole thing. I love the bells on the drums that he's doing. That yeah. is a great motif, and it's unique to the song. Yeah. And that's what this album might need a little bit more of, is that you don't hear any drum groove with these bells on any other song in this album. It's yeah. unique to Astrid Cannon, and that is awesome. Reverie on the Onyx I liked as well. Starts with this calm guitar riff instead of fading in, which is really nice. It doesn't fade into this yeah. guitar riff, it just starts with the guitar. Mm -hmm. And uh, has a bounce as well that I really like. Um, the bridge also has a lot of like big, dramatic, eerie buildup, which I thought was pretty cool, and I don't think I heard anything exactly like that on the rest of the album, so that's another unique moment that I enjoyed. Let's stop there for a second, because we keep, we, we, we kind of started off saying it doesn't have a lot of unique moments, but we're mentioning a bunch. But I want to just say one thing. These moments are unique to the album, but they don't, they don't stand out massively. Like, they are kind they're, of like su small they're subtle unique. I want to point that out there because I don't want us to sound like we're contradicting ourselves because the album does feel a little very samey samey throughout. Everything that we're talking about that stands out is a subtle thing. Yeah. Like he's talking about the bells in Acrid Cannon. Yes, it's there. Yes, it's kind of unique, but it's not like it's the only song that has bells. It's just the only song that has bell kind of grooves, if you want to put it that way. See, the thing is, you know, we, I guess I just mentioned a bunch of things that were like that. Yeah. But that's it. I don't got anything else to say yeah. about notable moments like that. Like, that was literally the end of it. So that kind of ties into the issue of like, okay, outside of what I just said, it's all pretty similar to itself. Yeah, well, there was a couple songs for me that um, kind of rose to the top as, as we listen to albums, that's what happens, right? So Acrid Cannon's one of them. That was actually one of the songs that I heard very, in the very first listen was one of the ones I was like, oh, wow, this is a song I'm gonna watch for. And it definitely stayed up at the top throughout the week for me. The one that actually kept growing on me was uh, Golden Mouth of Ruin. That song is sick. Um, particularly the outro, or maybe the last, if you, if you want to divide the song into acts, the whole third act is fucking awesome. Um, the rest of them though are good songs, but I mean, they're not playlist worthy for me personally, and they were just good to listen to. I wasn't like, oh my God, this is a crazy part or whatever. I thought I would have those feelings. I thought throughout the week I was gonna unpack this album and go, that's sick, that's sick, I love this, I'm gonna talk about this and all this. I, just nothing inspired me. And that's kind of surprising because there's so much talent here. 
Mm -hmm. Right? So, I don't know. What did you think of Golden Mouth of Ruin? Um, it was a song that I enjoyed when I heard it, but it wasn't anything that really blew my mind, but I was fine with it. I'm like, okay, yeah, this is good. I kind of got a bit of familiarity from it just because it was one of the singles we reacted to. Yeah. I believe it was the first one. Yeah. So, I, I was it, I was good. It was fine. Nothing amazing to me, but it was enjoyable. I just felt like it went extra hard on the outro, mm -hmm. or like the third act, and that's, that it did it for me. Fair enough. Anyways, guys, um, we'll rate it. Uh, I'll go first. I'm going to give uh, Bleed the Future a six. Um, I mean, I said everything I need to say about it. I, I, I wish there was more to it, more that I could really praise about it. Um, and you know what? To be frank and honest, maybe a lot just went over my head. I'm going to be honest about that. It's quite possible that that happened. It's a pretty dense album, to be It's fair. a dense album, and you know, I listened to it as much as I could, and that's what I'm ending up with right now, a six. Well, I think the album is pretty good, all things considered, especially because you don't really hear tech death albums like this very often. However, it does kind of get a little bit samey and some aspects don't stand out. I'm going to give it a 6.5 because there were some moments that really did kind of make for really enjoyable parts for me. But overall, it's still good, but not anything amazing. Anyway, guys, that's all we got for this video today. A 6 from Vile Self and a 6.5 from myself. And that's all we got. So remember to like the video if you liked it. Subscribe if you guys are new to the channel. I'm TV Fish. And I'll buy myself. And remember to stay tech.